Would you believe me if I told you I was a master of organization? Would you believe me if I told you I've had graduate level courses in organization? And do you know what I got on the final exam? That's right. Peanut butter. And jelly. Bazinga. I have to admit, I've never been a really big fan of bookshelf tours, library tours, people's personal libraries. And I think it's probably because maybe I'm a little bit envious. I see people with books that they're all the same size. Maybe they're color coded and they fit really nicely into really nice shelves. I don't have that. I don't know how that's accomplished. My books are all different size. Some are in great condition, some are not. Obviously, I was joking about being very organized. You're going to recognize that even more clearly once we get a closer view of the bookshelves. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this, so I think we're just going to turn the camera on the books, and I think the fun thing will be to just look at the books and talk about them. All right, so I'm going to start by showing you just sort of the long view here of the bookshelf. We've got one, two, three basically four rows of books. Okay, we've got some soundproofing on the wall. We'll see here, this is actually a wrestling mat that has stood up and I'm actually using that for sort of sound absorption. And then I've got some science fiction t-shirts there hanging on it so they're not too wrinkled. We've got a Solaris shirt in Russian, some Star Trek there. We've got our lights set up. We've got some more books over here in the corner. We'll take a look at that as well. But let's swing on back. Usually I would have on this shelf behind me, especially the books that are most beloved to me. The reason that wasn't working so much is when I film videos and I want to hold a book up, before I film I got to pull the books out of the bookshelf. That can be a lengthy process because I don't always remember where things are. And I, again, I'm not a whiz at organization, so I thought why don't I just alphabetize these by author? So obviously we're going to start up here with all of the A there's the green screen that I used to film on. So that might be in our way a little bit here today. And then it looks like we start this line here with the C's, get over to the D's and the E's. So obviously we're going to see some Greg Egan over there. This pile that's here is just stuff that has to be moved away. This is non-science fiction. I bought The Violent Bear It Away by Flannery O'Connor. I think it was probably last year I saw my friend Noah at Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse talking about this, and I was really intrigued by it. I just don't know what I'm going to get to it, and I have a friend who I think is going to really like it, so I'm going to probably give that away. These other books I'm not as familiar with. Uh, House of the Scorpion. I probably bought that a few years ago. And then I have read uh, these uh, these next two, the Morgan biography of Benjamin Franklin, and then obviously Robinson Crusoe, a, a classic by Daniel Defoe. Didn't love it. And World Without End, I'll put that away because it's not science fiction, but I'll probably read that at some point. One of my favorite novels of all time is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. So I'm sure that'll get some more play. First, we have I, Robot by Isaac Asimov, published in 1950. This is a first edition, a gnome first edition library edition. And then we've got the Doubleday edition. This is second foundation, first edition book. And then we've got a whole bunch of Isaac Asimov's here. A lot of these are going to be foundation novels. I think I have a few duplicates of some of these as well. And you can tell I didn't keep these in the best of shape. Uh, here we have Margaret Atwood, Oryx and Crake, Culture Series. I think I have the whole series here, but uh, if I'm missing anything, I probably have it in a box, probably underneath. Here we can see Foundation Sphere by Gregory Benford. It's part of the extension of the Foundation series. Alfred Bester's The Demolished Man. You can see this copy is pretty beaten up. <laughs> and then right next to that, we have uh, Alfred Bester's Tiger, Tiger, and The Stars, My Destination. Take a look at this one here. Really like that cover a lot. And then here we have a newer version, The Star's My Destination. Kind of wish they would have kept the original title on that, but that's okay. You're going to see The Etched City there by K.J. Bishop. we got a bunch of Ray Bradbury, of course, Fahrenheit 451, The Illustrated Man. This is The Whole Man by John Bruner, science fiction, dystopia, jealousy themes, published 1964. And then next up, we have these Ace Doubles. These were put out by Ace Books publishing in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We've got The Space Time Juggler by John Bruner, 1963, and The Astronauts Must Not Land, also by John Bruner. Astronauts is the better of the two, more sci fi ish. Let's put that down there. And here we have Planet of Your Own, also by John Bruner, published in 1963. On the back, we have The Beasts of Coal. Both are kind of weak, but we'll give Bruner the edge on that one. And we've got The Sheep Look Up by John Bruner, published in 1972. This is apocalyptic, warning, dystopian, prescient. There's another edition there. 
Here we have Lois McMastery, Behold, Falling Free, Shards of Honor, Barriard. This is all part of the Rokosigan saga. Anthony Burgess's The Wanting Seed. Uh, he's the author who wrote A Clockwork Orange, which you might be probably more familiar with. So this, The Wanting Seed, was published in 1962. And then here we've got some books that are sort of out of order there. Let's take a look here at shelf number two. And we're going to start off with... C.J. Chera, as you can see, we've got Down Below Station, published in 1981. This is a combo of epic space opera, strong characters. It was a Hugo winner. Uh, here we also have Sighteen by C.J. Chera. This was published in 1988. This is also a Hugo and a Locust Award winner. Psychological sci-fi cloning. Here you can see the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy by Lu Shixin. Uh, here is a Chinese edition of that. These Chinese editions are pretty cool looking. Take a look at some of these here. There's Deaths and Books, Book 3. Um, the, we've got this Omnibus, Arthur C. Clarke. Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Then we have Mission of Gravity by Hal Clement, published in 1954. This is an alien world with gravity hundreds of times that of Earth. We get these very small aliens that can exist in this high gravity situation. Here we have another ace double, Empire Star, published in 1966 by Samuel R. Delaney, one of my absolute favorite short science fiction works. And then on the other side of this, we have The Tree Lord of Imiten by Tom Purdom. The Empire Star side of this is excellent. The Pardum novella is silly pulp. It's a bit of a dud. And then here is the 1983 Bantam edition of Empire Star, probably my favorite edition. Here we have a Ace Reader. This was published in 1971. This has three short stories, Trouble with Tycho by Clifford Simak, Empire Star again, of course, by Samuel R. Delaney, and The Last Castle by Jack Vance. These are stories from the 1960s. Another Ace double here, we have The Towers of Toron by Samuel R. Delaney, of course. And then on the side, we have The Lunar Eye by Robert Moore Williams, published in 1964. This big one here is called Science Fiction Specials. You can see this one's been through the ringer. We have uh, many stories in this one, stories from Isaac Asimov, Samuel R. Delaney, Clifford Simak, J.T. McIntosh. Uh, Jack Vance and others. This is published in 1974. What I love about this ace double is it has Delaney's The Ballad of Beta 2. And then on the other side, we've got Alpha Yes, Terra No by Emil Pataha. And this is set in future San Francisco. It's Cold War science fiction stuff, curious genetics ideas, space opera. Certainly the stronger of the two on this double is The Ballad of Beta 2 by Delaney. No surprise. All right. And then we have this edition. If I'd had no other edition of Empire Star, this would be the one to have because it's got Empire Star and Beta 2. Of course, nothing on the other side there. Oh, oh well. Let's see what else we've got here. We have Out of the Dead City by Delaney, published in 1963. This is early Delaney pulpy science fiction. It's not the best, but I did like it. This is part of the Fall of the Towers trilogy. The Jewels of Aptor by Samuel R. Delaney, published in 1962. I think Delaney was only 19 or 20 years old when he wrote this, and you can tell that this was written by a younger author and a younger version of Delaney, but it definitely had its moments, and I did enjoy this read. They Fly at Siron by Samuel R. Delaney, published in 1993. This is Winged Aliens, and it's more modern Delaney. This isn't going to be for everybody, but if you like the idea of Winged Aliens, yeah, maybe you'll give this one a shot. How about Lunar One by Daniel DeLeal? This is a self-published independent author uh, novella published in 2018. And full disclosure, this is uh, somebody I had a very personal relationship with in college. This is set on a moon colony, Earth wiped out hundreds of years ago. This is dystopian. We'll put that right there. And then we've got Philip K. Dick. Ubik did a review on this recently on the channel. The Solar Lottery by Philip K. Dick, published in 1950. This is Dick's first published novel. It's got a lot of great ideas. Probably not his best stylistically. And we have a few Italian versions of Dick's work here. Here is Radio Free Albemuth, not Italian. This one is I Giocatori di Titano by Philip K. Dick, published in 1963. Uh, the English title of this is The Game Players of Titan. This is a fun read. It's got its comedy moments, and it's Dick, so you've got drugs, paranoia, <laughs> etc. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, classic. Tres Stigmate di Palmer Eldritch, The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, 
We've got Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said by Philip K. Dick, published in 1974. You can find this one on my top 210 science fiction books video. I think I had this one at like number 75 or probably number, I think it was number 77. And a lot of the other Dick books that I'm mentioning you'll find on that list as well. Three Stigmata, which we just showed you, uh, will be on that list, of course. And this next one, also uh, A Scanner Darkly. This is the DAW first edition printing in 1984. We've got The Prey of Gods by Nikki Drayden, published in 2017, robot fiction. And then here we've got a bunch of Greg Egan, uh, Shield's Ladder, Ternacea. Ternacea, look at this cover. Really like this cover. That's why I've got a couple of different versions of that. Here we have Luminous, really wonderful collection by Greg Egan. Look at that cover. I just love how bright that is. And here we've got more Ternacea. And let's talk about a few of these really quick. We have Eternal Flame. This is part of the Orthogonal series. Here we see also Clockwork Rocket, which is the first book published in 2011 of the Orthogonal trilogy in this world universe. The laws of physics are very different from that of our own, and we can say the same thing about Dicronauts here. And we also have Incandescence here, and Diaspora did reviews of both of those on the channel. And then here we've got some short story compilations, Oceanic. And on here we can see Philip Jose Farmer, To Your Scattered Bodies Go, published in 1971. This is a Hugo Award. Uh, trippy, After You Die, science fiction, book one of the Riverworld series. We've got Riders of the Purple Wage by Farmer, published in 1992. Short story collection. It's weird sci-fi. It's experimental. And then here's The Martian Rainbow by Robert L. Forward, published in 1991. This is Mars Fiction. I like this one more than I think most people did. I don't think it got a lot of uh, popular acclaim or critical acclaim. I didn't love it. it. It's a bit schlocky, but it's the right kind of Martian pulp fiction for me, and I really enjoyed it. I probably talked about this uh, during... I did. I did talk about this during Mars Week. I did five episodes in a row, so every day of the week I did a Mars episode, and I featured this on one of the days. It wasn't on my top ten day, but it was a Mars fiction book that I wanted to talk about. And here you can see I have a bunch of Neuromancer book editions from Japan, China, Korea, Brazil. I'll talk more about that in a minute, maybe. We've got some Peter F. Hamilton going on here. Up here, you can see Generation. Uh, this is edited by David Gerald. This is an anthology of short stories. For more on David Gerald, I'd recommend his novel, The Man Who Folded Himself. And I talked about that on Time Travel Week. Here we've got uh, Lords of the Psychon by Daniel F. Galui, published in 1959. This is the 1963 Bantam Books Mass Market Edition. Galui is definitely an underappreciated author, so I would suggest taking a look at some of his work. I talked a little bit about the the Lords of Psychon on my top 210 science fiction books list. It's one of the first, it's closer to number 250 than it is to number one. So you'll see it right away. If you click on that video, you'll get a little bit more of a summary about this book. And back here to Peter F. Hamilton, we've got, you can see Judas Unchained. This is the sequel to Pandora Star. And then we've got some Robert A. Heinlein here. Here you can see I've got The Glass Bead Game by Herman Hesse. This was published in 1943. Some question about whether it's science fiction or not. I haven't read this one, but I want to. And this won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1946, so I think it's worth giving it a shot. Here's Midnight Robber by Nalo Hopkinson, published in 2000. This is like a Caribbean vibe science fiction fantasy, and uh, it was a Hugo and Nebula nominee. This is A Science Ride by Fred Hoyle, published in 1959. This one one is definitely a forgotten, I don't even know if I want to call it a classic. It is classic science fiction. It's not bad. It's also not great. This is science fiction mystery set in Ireland. Here we've got a couple of editions of Brave New World. And here's Kazu Ishiguru's Never Let Me Go. This is a gorgeous science fiction read published in 2005. Beautifully written, character driven. The fifth season and is a great trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This one here is called Wine Dark Deep by R. Peter Keith. This is published, I think, in 2020 or 2022. I'm going to say 2020, and this is space opera. I also believe this is a self-published author, and he has some sort of links with NASA. I haven't read this yet. I opened it up and like looked at the first two pages. The writing didn't grab me right away, but that doesn't mean anything because I really just opened it and closed it really quickly because I was reading a couple other things at the same time. So I'll probably give this a shot at some point. Here we've got uh, Stephen King's 112263. I'm currently reading this. And then we've got The Stand. I've talked about this on the channel. And then we've got a lot of Ursula K. Le Guin. You can see The Left Hand of Darkness. And what do we've got here? This is The Eye of the Heron. The 
uh, Eye of the Heron is a 1978 young adult novella fantasy science fiction from Ursula K. Le Guin. And this is two colonies coexisting on a penal colony. And we've got politics and it's Le Guin, so there's solid prose, of course. Recently on the channel, I also did a, a full-length review of The Dispossessed, and we'll set that right here. Here's another copy of The Dispossessed. I think I like this cover a little bit better. There we go, a bunch of Ursula K. Le Guin novels. Let's take a look at what we've got here on this bottom shelf, we'll say. The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. Don't really know anything about that. I got it at a book sale. Let's see, we've got China Mievel here, Richard K. Morgan, Ian MacDonald, a lot of Ian MacDonald here, Stanislaw Lem, Stanislaw Lem Solaris. Great book, we're reviewing that soon on the channel. Uh, the Dervish House, River of Gods by Ian MacDonald. This was published in 2004. This is India-based future science fiction. Uh, I even had Ian MacDonald show up on my Top 210 video. He came and we did an interview over Zoom, and he talked a lot about both River of Gods and about the Dervish House. So check that out if you haven't had a chance to catch that yet. This is 10 different character POVs. We've got Brasil by MacDonald. This was published in 2017. This is near and future Brazil, sort of cyberpunk. Lois Lowry's The Giver, Stanislaw Lem's Siberiad and Solaris. And we've got Station Eleven, Sea of Tranquility, and China Mountain Zhang. This is by Maureen McHugh, published in 1992. This is Mars Fiction, if you have an interest in this book. This is a highly underrated book by McHugh. I talked about this a lot during Mars Week, and you can look that up on the channel as well if you go to my top 10 Mars Weeks read. You will find this book, Excellent Mars Fiction. Got another pile of great books here. You'll see the last names ending in N and O. Of course, you're going to find a Korophor on my bookshelves. And we have Lagoon, Who Fears Death, Nor, which is one I haven't read yet. And then we can see Linda Nagata is another favorite author of mine. You can see we've got a bunch of copies of 1984 here with uh, George Orwell. Got some Frederick Poole there. There you see Gravity's Rainbow. And let's go all the way over here. We've got More Than Human from Theodore Sturgeon, published in 1953. This is the Ballantine Books edition, and you can see there's some pretty crazy artwork on the cover there. And there are a lot of interesting editions of this one. You can just look that up. I did a full-length review of this one on the channel. Take a look. This is Homo Gestalt. We've got six individuals that come together and a blesh just a combination of meshing and blending and their psychic and telekinesis and teleportation powers all sort of blend together to make them one unit or almost one person. Their bodies don't merge, but their their, their minds do and their abilities do. And so uh, they're able to represent a next step or leap in human evolution. The novel explores a lot of the morality surrounding the idea of having evolved humans coexisting with non-evolved humans. Earth Abides by George R. Stort. This one was on my Gap Reads video. I have not read it yet, so I can't talk to you about it. Let's take these down and get to some of these Clifford Simak novels. We've got A Choice of Gods by Simak. Cosmic Engineers. Check out that cover. How about that? And this is Other Worlds of Clifford Simak. These are a bunch of short stories. Here is Time and Again, published in 1951. This also carried the title First He Died. And here we have three editions of City. And let's just take a look at each of these covers. They're pretty cool. Why do I have three editions? I don't know. I just like when they're kind of unique covers like this. They're fun to have those. And Ring Around the Sun. I've talked about this on the channel also. Here we've got Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons. Contact by Carl Sagan, one of my favorite first contact books. We've got some fantasy here, Brandon Sanderson. Maybe I'll give that a chance at some point. And the rest of this stack, you'll see Olaf Stapleton and Neil Stevenson. You can see the Diamond Age there, Cryptonomicon, some Robert Silverberg there at the bottom. And then we've got this last stack. We've got Bruce Sterling's Skits Matrix Plus. Here we have Up the Walls of the World by James Tiptree Jr., also known as Alice Sheldon. Alice Sheldon took on the pen name James Tiptree Jr. because female science fiction authors were not so much of a thing in the 70s. And this was a way for Sheldon to be noticed, I guess, by her estimation and be accepted as a serious writer. Unfortunately, the 70s were what the 70s were. So this was published in 1978, and this was her 
debut novel, although uh, she had had a lot of success with short stories previous to this. The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi, Children of Time series, which I really loved, Grass by Sherry S. Tepper, and then here's the original copy of Schismatrix. Schismatrix by Bruce Sterling was published in 1985. This is an absolutely amazing space opera. There's so many ideas in this. It's, it's somewhat cyberpunk and philosophical science fiction, and I'll have a review of this one up on the channel very soon. I've already filmed this review. It's just a matter of putting it up. The Year of the Quiet Sun by Wilson Tucker, published in 1970. This is time travel, post-apocalyptic science fiction. This is somewhat of a forgotten classic. It's a Hugo a Nebula Award nominee, and it did win the John W. Campbell Award in 1976. So this might be one to put on your to-be-read list if you have not read it yet. I have not read this in... I'm going to say at least 20 years. So maybe we'll give this one a reread at some point. We'll see. That's going to do it for this shelf. And here we can take another kind of long view at the shelf. So let me shift the camera angle here and bring a couple of these down to take a look at. First up will be The Demolished Man by Alfred Bester. This was the first novel to ever win a Hugo Award. This is interesting because it's a whodunit and it's sort of a science fiction landscape as well as science fiction world. And you will find a review of this book on my channel. Here is the... Folio Society edition we have for Octavia Butler's Kindred. See if we can show you that there. And it comes in this nice sleeve. So in Kindred, we have a woman who is transported. She basically doesn't know how this happens, but she's in living in 1970s California, and she's transported back to the antebellum South. And she, her first time back, and she, you know, she has no idea what's going on. She's in the antebellum South, and she saves a young boy from drowning. And the young boy is this white kid with orange hair and he is the son of a sl of a slave owner she jo she goes back and forth you know she wakes up back in california and it's like hey what the heck happened but each time that she finds herself back in the antebellum south again not knowing how she got there the stakes just get higher and higher the end of eternity by isaac asimov obviously we're going to have asimov on this shelf of a's and the end of eternity is one of the great time travel stories of all time. And you can also see a full review of this book on my channel. I'd also like to show off this copy of Isaac Asimov's Second Foundation. Second Foundation is not the second novel of the Foundation trilogy or the Foundation series. It is the third novel of the first trilogy, and this concludes the first trilogy. Foundation is the story of the Galactic Empire, which is about to fall or fall in a few hundred years, and one man has foreseen it, and that man is Harry Seldon, the creator of psychohistory. It's a predictive science. He's able to predict the fall of the Galactic Empire, and he puts in motion a plan bringing together other scientists on a faraway world to supposedly create an Encyclopedia Galactic but really what he's doing is getting a team to sort of shepherd in the next empire, which they're not really going to do, but they're going to try to create conditions for, that will allow for that to happen sooner rather than later. So maybe a thousand years rather than many, many thousands of years. We've got Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delaney. I've recently done a video on this, calling this my favorite science fiction book of all time. Then we've got some Philip K. Dick. And again, I just pulled these off of that shelf and I don't have them in any particular order here. Do We Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. All right, now this is a non-science fiction book that I have on my shelf, but it's Samuel R. Delaney so it fits in the Samuel R. Delaney section. Times Square Red, Times Square Blue. This is a book I would recommend to folks who are fans of Delaney. It's, it's a very thin book, so it's an easy read. And I'll just talk about where it starts off. It starts off with Delaney talking about New York in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And he's talking about the theaters and the peep shows and, you know, the pornography centers where people go. And yes, definitely adult themes in this one. This is not for the younger reader, but some of the stories are just really interesting and it's a really good look inside of Delaney's brain. This is the last Philip K. Dick we'll talk about today, A Scanner Darkly. I just did a review on this. Just put this up so you can see this on the channel. And this is all about addiction, the darkness of addiction, how addiction affects the addict, how it affects people in their life. I also have this version of A Scanner Darkly and I had my eye on this one for a while. It was $75 at the bookstore, which I wasn't going to spend, but I had a bunch of books to unhaul that were not science fiction books and books that I wasn't going to read. So I brought those to the bookstore and traded them in. So this ended up costing me about $5. Also, 
I'm probably going to read this very soon. Uh, this will also be a reread. Permutation City by Greg Egan. Shield's Ladder by Greg Egan. I should probably talk about at least one of these. So let's talk about Shield's Ladder. I've got this review going up really soon. I reread this recently. And I have some Elton John music for this one with some interesting Shield's Ladder music. This one is set far future. We have a scientist who is working on an experiment and using all the regular rules of physics. And she maybe had a breakthrough. So she goes out to this place further out in the universe where some of these exper experiments can take place in sort of a vacuum so she can really get better results. After being really very careful, something goes wrong in the experiment and there's a big catastrophe that occurs. What's called the Novo Vacuum is created and this vacuum is basically gobbling up planets, stars, and it's spreading at about half the speed of light. So anything in its path is going to be like gobbled up by the vacuum. This is a challenging novel to read because there are a lot of quantum physics, which is not always the easiest thing to understand or to read. The Membranes by Chi Ta Wei. Chi Ta Wei is a Taiwanese author. In this story, our main character is Momo. And Momo is a dermal care technician. And she lives under the ocean. So no, this is not The Little Mermaid. What's interesting here is... Guess what? Another dystopian world. In this dystopian world, the earth is basically on fire. It's gotten too hot. Our only recourse is to build under the oceans. Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. This is set in our solar system. In our solar system, we've discovered a mysterious ship. It's gigantic. It's in our solar system got to be aliens, right? So we send a vessel out to investigate. The crew goes onto this gigantic ship, looks around. We're not seeing anything at first. Are we going to run into aliens? I don't know. Maybe this is a first contact novel. You'll have to find out. The prose is solid. It's very atmospheric. Speaking of first contact and speaking of Arthur C. Clarke, we get first contact right away in Childhood's End. The aliens show up. They look like little devils and they are here to make our world better and then help us transition to our next state of existence, whatever that means, despite it may be reading slow, if that makes sense. I also have to talk about Lu Shikshin's The Three-Body Problem, the sequels to this, The Dark Forest and Death's End. I've talked about all of these a lot on the channel. I've done individual reviews of all three books. I did a What's So Great about the Remembrance of Earth Past trilogy as well. And I've got this one here. Look at this beautiful organization. I hope we don't lose these books when I pull this one out. Eek, there goes one. No. All right. Good. So this is a Chinese version, which I am not capable of reading, but you can see sort of that cut out there. That's kind of neat. I just really liked the look of these. So I just wanted to have this as well. And it's one of my favorite series of all time. So I don't mind having the duplicates. Here we've got Seven Eves. So these are things that I'm currently reading. And Seven Eves is a first read for me. So if you watch this channel, you know I do a lot of rereads because since having a YouTube channel, I'm thinking about the books that I've read in the past that I've loved that I really want to talk about. So obviously I'm rereading them. This is a new read for me. Neil Stevenson is a favorite author of mine. This is a book that starts out with us finding out that the moon is about to explode and basically destroy the earth, make the earth uninhabitable. How do we react to that? Well, part of the strategy is going to send people up to space. And you know we have sort of as a base, the International Space Station and the asteroid that is attached to it. And we're going to send up some arcs and try to get people on those. And that's basically just the setup for the book. I'm about 400 pages into this. I'm really loving it. All right, let's breeze through these shelves over here. These look special. They're like glass shelves, right? And then we've got our stuff on the wall here. This is not the most tutty thing. Like, All right, so we've got the Expanse series here. And we've also got the, uh, what is this called? The Final Architect series, which I should know because I've reviewed all three of these books on the channel as well. I've reviewed probably the first quarter or the first third of the Expanse series. I've ex I've been reviewing the Expanse series as I've been rereading them. So I, re I read the whole series except for the last book that came out recently. And since there is a final book now, I have to read all the way back through. Well, I got as far as Abaddon's Gate and no, Chibula Burn, and I got kind of hung up. Like, so I liked the series, but at the same time, I'm not wildly enthusiastic to keep going. I will go back. It's just like, there's so many other things I want to read, but it is a good series. I do recommend it. I will get back to it because I do want to get to that final book. I really had fun with this one. So this is another one where Shards of Earth was a great read. 
a slower burn because we're getting to know the characters and the world building, but it pays off because Eyes of the Void just takes off wall to wall action. And Lords of Uncreation was a really good ending. Uh, I think the second book was probably the strongest for me, but you know, all three books together work out really well. I've got reviews for all three of those. And the last two, Eyes of the Void and Lords of Uncreation, I do have uh, parody music. I know I used, I think I used REM parody music for both of those. There's a very cool Portuguese cover for Neuromancer. I love that. And that is the, the, the colors there is the, meant to be the face of Riviera, who is a character who is a, an illusions specialist. We've got the Red Rising series here. And that's another one that has new books coming out. So I have to, or it has a new book that has come out. There's Lightbringer. It's actually there. I have not read Lightbringer yet. So I've got to go through all of these again, because it's been too long since I've read them. Talk about giving books away. I've got these beautiful special editions of Dune. I've got two Folio Society editions of Dune. One of, I think the other one is probably in the, behind the doors in that other bookshelf. And we've got a whole bunch of different covers of Dune there. We've got a Folio Society of the Foundation series, Dark Theory by Wick Welker. He also wrote Refraction, which I read and reviewed on the channel. I have not read Dark Theory yet. This is another independent author. I think he self-published Project Hail Mary. I also have a first edition of that somewhere. And let's see, it's getting a little dark here. Sirens of Titan. Okay, so we're down towards the end of the alphabet. So obviously we're going to get to our Werner Vinge, Werner Vinge and Kurt Vonnegut. And you can see those there. Gene Wolfe, Shadow of the Torture. Kate Wilhelm. Where late the sweet bird sang. Robert Charles Wilson's Spin. So Shadow of the Torturer and Spin and Fire Upon the Deep are all going to be reviews that you'll find on my channel. And you'll on the, also on the top 210. To Say Nothing of the Dog by Connie Willis. H.G. Wells is the Invisible Man. Some more Wells there. Peter Watts, of course, is going to be here. 20,000 Leagues Under the, Under the Sea. Slaughterhouse Five. Not wanting to sound like a broken record, you will see a lot of those on my top 210 list. Day of the Triffids, I recently reviewed on the channel, or at least reviewed it this year. Echopraxia by Peter Watts, I talked about that on a compilation video recently. The Freeze Frame Revolution by Peter Watts, I've got a review of that on the channel. The Martian is on the top 210. There's more Gene Wolfe, more of the Book of the New Sun. More Robert Charles Wilson's. We've got Murderbot books there from that series. Take a look at some Zelazny and here's some YA stuff. James Dashner, which this random version of Catching Fire, which is the second book of the Hunger Games series. And there's another version of Wick Welker. This is the, what does that say? Not for resale. So that was the version that he had sent me to read and I just, I couldn't get around to it. Iron Widow by Jiran J. Zhao. This is also a YA, which I don't read a lot of, but I did read this one. It's a good one for, if you like to read like stories of like vengeance, like this one hits the revenge stuff really hard and I enjoyed it for that. And I did review this on the channel. All right. I've got one more shelf here to show you. It's this little shelf here in the corner. As you can see, we were looking at this bookshelf over here. I hesitate to show you too much of my office as it is a complete design disaster area. Here we go. So this shelf is really roast worthy because as you can see, there is no rhyme or reason to the madness. Let's start here. This shelf is sort of empty at the bottom. We've got a little bit more Ken Follett, Fall of the Giants. I also, this book, I don't know if I'll ever read this. This is Nikolai Tolstoy, The Coming of the King. I got this because it was a chunker. This was before Booktube. This was a dollar. I thought, huh, maybe I'll read that some point. The Orpheus plot is interesting. This is, sorry, a little bit of noisy closet door there, by Christopher Swidler. I don't even know why I bought this. I saw it and I thought, you know what? That looks kind of like Ender's Game. I have not read this, so I'm not comparing the two because Ender's Game is, you know, an incredible work of science fiction, so I don't want to compare them, but those vibes were evoked when I saw that cover, so I thought I'd pick it up. I don't know if I'll ever read it. Maybe I'll look up a re review and see if anybody else has talked about it. Big Man Down by Michael Schotter. This is a self-published independent author. This was a really cool book. It gave me sort of Alfred Bester, uh, The Demolished Man's vibes, but like much more toned down. And as I look at this bookshelf, I think this has, you know, it wasn't really meant to, I think it was like a china cabinet or something. It came with the house. They left it behind because this was an estate sale. And uh, I think it definitely has some potential as you can see. Yeah. So I've got like this picture of my son Paolo from, God, that's going to be at least 10, 12 years ago because he's not that age anymore. Uh, let's come back down here. 
The Redemption of Time by Bao Shu. And this was sort of like fan fiction uh, written onto the end of the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy, which I really loved. I heard this book get mixed reviews, probably more panned than not. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that. It's also one of those things like I would have to read through the whole series again to give this a shot. I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet. Uh, because there's so many other things that I want to read. We've got Alan Dean Foster's Relic. I think we might have seen a copy of this over on the other bookshelf too when we were looking, because I do have two copies of this. Ender in Exile. This is an edition, uh, part of the Ender Saga by Orson Scott Card. This was a big part of my reading in the 90s, maybe the 80s as well. I forget when I started reading those. I'm just going to pull up here too, because I know that Ender's Shadow is over here. Uh, good job. Don't even have the same series on the same shelf. Ender's Shadow is... I consider it part of the Enders series, even though I think they're considered two different series, the Shadow series and then the Ender series. But really, if you're you know in the mood for a big series and you want to read everything in a series, I would read those two series together. This takes place at about the same time as Ender's game. And it's not just a rehash of the same story told from a different perspective, because this is from Bean's perspective, who is a minor, not a minor, but a secondary character in the Ender saga. And it's not just like Ender's game, but told from his perspective. It gets a little bit deeper. It's a very good read. Some people prefer it actually to Ender's Game. I think it's more solid writing, but I think the original is still the best as far as between those two. Let's uh, come down here again. We've got Philip K. Dick. This is another copy of Ubik. This, I don't even know what this book is, but I'm a big fan of Neil Stevenson. This looks like something he probably written, wrote a long time ago in an early novel by him. I don't even know if it's science fiction, but uh, I'm going to put that down here. I'll reorganize these later. Uh, let's see. Uh, so anyway, I found that in a little free library. I said, it's Neil Stevenson. Let me pick it up. And now that I've picked it up, I'm like, I'm probably never going to read that one. So I might just kind of put that back in the little free library. Here's some more Delaney. Samuel Delaney. Shorter Views, Queer Thoughts, and the Politics of of the paraliterary. Uh, this is nonfiction. I recommend Delaney's nonfiction. This is one of these authors who, uh, like Asimov, writes great uh, fiction, great science fiction, and great nonfiction. Uh, if you really want to get dive deeper into the mind of Samuel D R. Delaney and get some really interesting thoughts on race, sexuality, life in general. That's a good one, as is this one, Silent Interviews on Language, Race, Sex, Science Fiction, and some comics. This is maybe probably my second favorite of his uh, nonfiction work. The first is I'm refill. I'm, I'm filming this bookshelf a different day than when I filmed the rest. So I don't remember if we saw this on the other bookshelf, but I have it out because I've been rereading it. And this is Times Square Red, Times Square Blue by Delaney. Let's put that down here for now also. That's my favorite of his nonfiction work. And not to go too deep into that, but like it starts out, he's talking about New York City in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, really the 80s and 90s. And the, you know, peep shows and the theaters that showed, you know, adult films and all of the Let's just say the shenanigans that went on in those uh, in those theaters and the high point of it and the low point of it. And then towards the end of the book, it gets quite deeper. Then we come back up here. We've got one more Delaney. This is The Fall of the Towers by Samuel R. Delaney. And that is fiction. Uh, this is not science fiction. Gay Dads and My Two Moms. Uh, we won't talk too much about that because it's not science fiction. But this is a really good one. This is written by Zach Walls. He grew up with two moms. Uh, I am a family where I am one of two dads uh, to my, my son and daughter. And... So that's why I got this one years ago when I first had my first child. But uh, this one's a, a, an interesting one, reading the perspective from this fellow who grew up with two moms. The Space Between Worlds. This might have been on the other shelf too when we looked at it the first time. This is Micaiah Johnson. This was her debut novel. This is like two or three years ago. It was a really it was one of my favorite new releases that year. And it was like right when I was starting BookTube. So I did a review on that. I don't know if I still have it up on the channel. Might be one that I'll redo because... It was when I didn't really know how to use a camera or a microphone par uh, properly. We also have, uh, and and this is a this is a really good one. It's uh, if you like multiple Earths or like the multiverse, this is pretty cool because this main character Kara, she travels between worlds using technology to do it. So it's not really it's, there's maybe a little fantastical element to it, but it's really meant to be in a science fiction universe. The thing is, though, she cannot travel to a world where her doppelganger exists or like you'll implode or blow up or cease to exist or something terrible will happen. You'll be mangled or whatnot. So she can only travel to the ones where her doppelganger is dead or doesn't exist. And it's actually a lot of worlds she can go to because she is dead in a lot of the other worlds. 
And that's kind of part of the mystery of the book is why is she dead in these other worlds? That's kind of the mystery. Definitely an interesting read. I'd re I would recommend it. We've got a Harry Potter book here, which I've not read. I haven't read the Harry Potter books. I bought this because it was a book sale. It was a dollar. It's a big chunk of a hardback. I figured that's a good deal. And maybe my kids would read that. And then we've got a little bit of manga or I don't know, is this considered manga or... I was in a bookstore and asked for some recommendations. So I got Saga. I mean, maybe these are just graphic novels. I don't, I'm actually not as familiar with what the distinctions are. Uh, Batman, The Long Halloween. I know that is a graphic novel. And then I also had another one uh, called God Country, which I did start reading and I kind of liked that one. And we've got a knife there, which is ridiculous. The Pocketbook of Boners. What's up with that? This was, there's a whole bunch of boxes of books in the attic of this house when I bought it, and this was one of them. I feel like I want to look them up and see if any of them are worth anything. A lot of them were kind of moldy and had like rat bite marks in them and stuff like that, so I got rid of them. But um, I think the one thing that I got out of it that was pretty in pretty good shape and probably valuable is I think I have these first editions of Shogun, but I don't know where those are at the moment. We've got some Robert Heinlein here, The Puppet Masters. I believe I had this on my top 150 list. I don't know if I had it on my top 210. I might have dropped it off since then. Just because it's been so long since I read it, I felt like I don't remember it too, too well. My Side of the Mountain, non-science fiction. I read that with my kids because I read that growing up. It's sort of a survival story where a kid goes and lives in the mountains and kind of off the grid. Very interesting, fun read, good read for kids. More Heinlein, The Door Into Summer. I think the only Heinlein I've done a full review of is Stranger in a Strange Land, and you can see that on my channel. And I also did some parody music for that. It's one of the favorite, my favorites of the songs that I did and the lyrics that I wrote for a book. Uh, so if you haven't read that one, check it out. I do a little bit of rant in there. The Worlds of Clifford Simak. I've got tons of Simak floating around. You might have seen that on the other shelf. I don't know what this is. This is another book that was in the attic when I bought the house. Social control of industry. Okay. And then this one is one I still want to get back to because I almost finished it. It's The Far Pavilions by MMK. The only reason I didn't finish this really long, wonderful, wonderful book is because I've been reading science fiction content, right? Science fiction books so I can keep cranking out content and doing all my sci fi rereads doesn't leave a lot of room to read things that are not science fiction. But I do love things that are not science fiction too. It's just that right now I'm just reading mostly science fiction. All right, top shelf. This is the the last shelf. Let's put on some music for this last one. We're going to come up here and we've got some Schumann and Schubert. All right, so we've got a little bit of mood music here. We'll get one more quick shot over at this fancy glass book shelving and enjoy a little bit of this old fashioned sound. And you can see this Dune book we have here. So you would think you'd have all the Dune together, right? All right, this is in plastic, so I don't want to get the shiny light on that too much. That's the first edition I got of Project Hail Mary. When that came out, I have to, so I have two copies of that. And then here's this Folio Society edition of Dune, which we've got up here as well. So when we look inside, this is what we've got. There's Paul Atreides. You can't see too much, I think, of the shininess of this it looks i think maybe more matte gray in the video here and let's see is there anything on the back no the main reason i bought this is like this is one of my favorite covers of all time i just think just the way the blue eyes stand out on this silver silvery speckled background is awesome and then of course my other favorite covers are those neuro neuromancer ones that i showed you there's that ender shadow again and then here's some more here we've got the count of monte cristo that's on my like long, long term to be read list because I have a feeling I'm really going to like it. The closest thing, uh, well, the thing that I guess is compared, not compared, but of course this comes first. It's uh, The Star is My Destination, also known as Tiger Tiger. I think I maybe showed that one or you saw it over on the other bookshelf. Has a lot of parallels t to this, almost sort of like Bester's retelling of The Count of Monte Cristo in a much shorter book, but I do want to read that at some point. And here we got uh, A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr., which has no reason to be over on this shelf. It should be over with the M's, of course. And I really like this book. This is post-apocalyptic. There's strong re religious themes and ideas in here as if the book cover will give you any indication. And this is funny, I was just talking about this the other day because Whitney from The Secret Sauce of Storycraft and I were just talking about something uh, with somebody else. 
and she was roasting me a little bit because she has this idea because ever since we did reviews of the sparrow and i sort of panned i didn't pan but i kind of certainly dug into mary doria russell's uh religious agenda that she had and admittedly had when writing the book and it came up in maybe some other book as well so whitney has this idea that i'm triggered by <laughs> any books that have religion in them that's come up a few times so this was my i said to her Oh, come on, you know that I, 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 what about the other books that I do love that have religious elements in them? And like, and I thought I was going to rattle off a list, and the only one that came to mind immediately was a chemical for Leibowitz. So anyway, take that. You are roasted, Whitney. Bazinga. And the last thing up here is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Recently did a review of this on the channel. Take a look at that. This one is something I think most people are familiar with, either through the book or the movie. Both were actually done really well. And obviously this is one where a billionaire using DNA that was preserved in amber recreates dinosaurs and puts them on an island in an attempt to create a theme park and of course nature finds a way and that doesn't go so well so there you have the bookshelf tour thanks for sticking with me would love to hear your comments and i would love to request that if you enjoyed this and if you've watched my book reviews and enjoy you enjoyed the channel please take the time to just really quickly go over to the subscribe button click on it and then you'll know whenever i put out new videos and you can support the channel in that way. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read.